Hey guys, what is up? Spiff here. And a lot of you asked me to do a FPS guide for the 1.0 update. So here it is. This is the only FPS guide for the new 1.0 update that you need to follow. I'm going to cover everything that works, nothing that doesn't. If you want to know how I did my testing to prove that it works, you can check the previous videos on my YouTube channel, or there'll be a card icon up in the top right corner that you can click and it'll show you how I went through and tested all these. I'm gonna start off with some changes that everybody should do. Whether you have a high performing PC or low, you need to do these. And then as I get further along in the video, it's gonna be more for people with lower end PCs. It's gonna be kind of grasping at straws for people with higher end PCs. Real quick, if you haven't seen my how to optimize Windows 10, I suggest going and watching that video first. There'll be a card icon up right now. Go ahead and click that. It'll show you how I got my operating system ready to make sure I get the peak performance out of it before I do any of these changes and I suggest you take a look at that. So let's get to it. First things first, this is the most important. Go to where your game is. I'm gonna be doing this on the test server uh, because that's currently what the 1.0 updates on. On the left hand side in the library, you're gonna to wanna to right click it, go to properties. This is probably gonna pop up with general. Just go all the way over to local files, go to browse local files, TSL game, binaries, Win64, and then you're gonna see TSL game.exe. You're gonna to wanna to right click go down to properties you're gonna want to go to compatibility and then you're gonna to want to go down to override high DPI scaling behavior and then you want to set it to application so just tick that and set it to application hit apply and you're done here now if you do not see that this is a Windows 8 and 10 thing if you're on Windows 7 there is a way to do it one of my subscribers let me know about it I will be putting that information in the description down below next up launch the game and as you see I already have the game launched so once the game is launched just go ahead right click go to task manager now in Windows 10 this is how your task manager is going to look you're going to want to go over to details you want to scroll down to TSL game right click it go to set priority set that to high you're also going to want to right click it go to set affinity and just make sure that all of your CPU cores are clicked there's no need for for the launch options use all available cores it's already doing that guys all right so let's talk about in-game settings so in game this is what i'm currently running to give me the best looking game and still the best performance now if you're one of the ones that would rather have the best looking game for a competitive advantage this may not be for you and i'll explain what to change in a minute but if you want your game to look as pretty as possible and still run well then you can go ahead and copy these settings first things first you need to be running the game in full screen it does give you a noticeable fps boost Field of view and brightness, this is just personal preference. However, on the new desert map, having the brightness up too high, the way that the sun is, it's hard to see people up on hilltops. Also, when the light reflects off the sand, it's a little bit bright. So you could adjust it to whatever you want. 70 seems to be working fine for me. Quality, we're gonna do custom. So we're gonna go screen scale, leave it at 100. Anything over 100 can cause the game to look blurry. Anything under 100 will make it look super jagged. If your PC is very low though, you can leave it at 1920 by 1080 and just lower this all the way down to 70 and that's going to run the game at 720p while your monitor is a 1080p monitor. If you want a quick like 5%, 10% FPS boost, you can move it down to 95 or 90. It doesn't look too bad and it will give you a little bit of an FPS boost. But I would suggest if you can, leaving that at 100 because it makes the game look the best and it's easier to see people at far distances. Anti-aliasing, I leave mine on very low because if you put on anything anything above very low even low it makes everything in the distance look very blurry and it's super distracting now if you wanted to do that you can put it on medium and then you can uh, download reshade which i have right here and then you can set it up to where that can resharpen it me personally i play with anti-aliasing on very low on most games uh, because i'm used to having a bad pc so for me it's not that big of a deal i leave it on very low now post-processing if you want the most competitive advantage, you could leave this on very low. But if you want the game to look good, just go ahead and put this on low. You don't need to put it on anything higher than that. Just put it on low. It'll make the textures and the buildings and everything look a lot better. It adds a nice ambient inclusion to everything, which if you don't know, is kind of like the darkness and the in the shadows of, of walls and on shelves and stuff like that. And I'll show you an example right here. Shadows, you could go ahead and leave that on very low because we have post-processing on low and that's going to kind of make the shadows look nice, but shadows will give you a performance hit. So I go ahead and I leave that on very low. 
Also, anything above very low can make the inside of buildings pretty dark. Textures, you could run this at whatever your computer can handle. Me personally, I like a medium. If you're getting a big stuttering issue in the game, you only have like maybe two gigs of VRAM. It's definitely that. Lower your textures. Uh, the textures will cause a stuttering issue because if the textures aren't loading fast enough on your RAM and on your graphics card's VRAM, it's going to go to your hard drive and you're going to notice when it makes that switch, it's going to cause it to stutter. I believe that's how this game works. That's what I've noticed since I switched to an SSD. It solved a lot of those problems, but still, if you don't have enough VRAM, just run your textures on very low. Honestly, I don't mind playing with it on very low. The only reason why I play it on medium is because when I live stream, I want my game to look as pretty as possible for my viewers. And I found that a post-processing on low and a textures on medium make the game look really nice. Effects very low, foliage for a competitive advantage and a performance advantage, this should be on very low. It just makes the grass render further away and people could be hiding in it. You don't need that, very low. View distance, I keep mine on very low uh, because with post-processing, it will show the outline of the city while you're jumping out of the plane so you don't really need to see the buildings also it'll stop stuff from rendering in the distance so again if somebody's hiding out in the distance this will stop anything from rendering in after a certain point people still render in at the same distance no matter what view distance you have don't let anybody tell you different a character model will render in at 900 meters no matter what whereas foliage the grass stuff like that is all adjusted in your settings and it will render out depending on the settings that you've chose. So view distance for me, very low. Motion blur off, because why would you? V-Sync off. Uh, sometimes I turn V-Sync on. I noticed that this game is one game that does give me really bad screen tearing. So now I have V-Sync turned on in my NVIDIA settings, which I'll show you in a second. If you're getting really bad screen tearing where the bottom of your screen has like a line where it's just not synced up with the rest, Go ahead and just turn this on and it will fix it. Uh, UI, if you take off the inventory screen character render, I know that this helps a lot of people a lot. For me, I saw about a 3% FPS boost, which isn't high, but it is something. And I just don't need it, so I do turn that off. They have a little disclaimer here now under the kill cam that enabling kill cam may affect client performance. This has only been out since I've updated my computer, so I haven't seen a difference. But if you have this enabled and you're seeing some performance drops, make sure to just disable that. All right, my NVIDIA settings. So let's go take a look at those. Now, if you have an AMD graphics card, obviously your control panel is going to look different but you do have these same options in your graphics card settings. You just have to figure out what your graphics card calls them. So my settings have changed a little bit. Basically, the only things I've changed are the things that are bold. Everything else is on the defaults, and then this is what I've changed. Anisotropic filtering, I think that's how you say that, is off. Uh, FXAA is off. Gamma correction is untouched, but it is on. Anti-aliasing mode is enhance the application settings. Anti-aliasing settings is two times. Anti-aliasing transparency is default off. GPUs is default all max pre-rendered frames is one multi-frame sampled AA MFAA is off open GL rendering GPU is auto power management mode is preferred maximum performance that's important shader cache is default on anisotropic sample optimization is off uh, negative LOD bias is allow quality is high performance trilinear optimization is on threaded optimization is auto triple buffering is off and vertical sync which is the important one this is if you're having screen tearing issues and you want v-sync but you don't want it to cap your frame rate or slow down your performance just go to your graphics card and set vertical sync to fast. In AMD, I don't know what the setting would be, but this helped me out tremendously with my screen tearing. Came from a viewer in my Discord, Nighthawk. So if you guys also need help, you can check out my Discord. I have a lot of people in there with a lot of knowledge that are willing to help you out. But yeah, that made a huge difference for me. So after you change that, go ahead and just get out of there. Now right there is where I currently stop for my optimization. But if you still need some help, there's a few more things that we can do. So let's open up a folder. We'll right click on this PC, go to properties. And then you just want to, on the left hand side, go to advanced system settings. Another way that you could do it is if you just go to search, you just type in advanced system settings and it'll bring you straight to here. Under performance, you can adjust these settings. I've done that in my Windows 10 video. Uh, but what we're going to be worrying about is virtual memory. So let's go to advanced, go to virtual memory, hit change. Me personally, I leave it at automatically manage paging files. But if you're having troubles uh, running the game or if you're getting like a laggy stutter or something like that, you can go to custom size. You go to custom size and I suggest doing this on the fastest drive that you have and preferably a drive that is different 
from the one that the game is installed on. That's going to keep it from overworking your drive while it's already trying to load the game. So go to custom size. And for the initial size, you just want to put the recommended down here. For the maximum size, you could do one of three things. You could put the recommended size. You could do the recommended size times 0.15, or you could do the recommended size times two in the maximum slot. Now it's going to take some experimenting because some of those may not work. It may cause your game to crash immediately. For me, it seems like all three of them make my game crash more often than not. So that's why I don't do it at all. But if it does work for you, it does give you a noticeable FPS increase of about 10%. So it is worth doing. And those are the three numbers that you can pick. Which ones will actually work for your computer? I don't know. You're going to have to just test it out and see. All right, next up, a thing that you can do. This is really if you're on a lower end PC, you could download a program such as Razer Cortex or CPU cores. Now, Razer Cortex is free and a great program, but to run the program, it will use up some of your computer's resources, which will hinder the overall performance boost that you would have seen. But it is still a very viable option for for a lot of people. The reason why I no longer use Razer Cortex is now I own CPU cores and CPU cores. It is a paid program. It is uh, $15. This does go on sale from time to time for $7. And it's pretty worth $7, I would say, for the increase that it would give me. You could read the reviews and a lot of people seem to be very happy with it. I would not pay $15 for it. There's a company that made one for free online called Not CPU Cores that you could download for free. Uh, I haven't had luck with that. It's never been able to install on my computer. Okay, so inside Razer Cortex, let's go to Game Booster. That's where most of our tweaks are going to be made. You go ahead and hit Defrag and Optimize here. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a few tweaks to your system, shut down programs in the background that could be hindering your performance. But the main thing we're going to worry about is Boost here, and we're going to hit Configure. Now under the Configured section, Processes, you can go through here and select which ones you want to be shut down when your games boost. If you don't know what it is, I don't suggest doing it, but like Spotify Web Helper, that could go down. I don't need that. Smart Screen, I don't need that while I'm playing games. Uh, like Nvidia Helper, and I don't need any Web Helper, you can just shut down. That's gonna be ruining your internet speed and your PC's performance, so you could just get rid of all of those. Next up, Services Stopped. This I wouldn't touch. Just leave it alone. It's usually pretty good. Non-Windows services, for me, I have zero. You may have some. If you know what it is and you don't need it, go ahead and just disable it. Uh, if you don't know what it is, but you really want the most performance, you can Google each and everything and see what it does to your computer to know if it's safe to shut down. For other, this is where the, uh, the main thing is going to take place. So clean RAM, that's very important with a game like PUBG because PUBG has huge memory leak issues. Launch game on desktop, you can go ahead and click that. And basically what that does is it provides a maximum processing power for gameplay without interruptions. And the last thing that you need to click is explorer.exe, which shuts down your window explorer, which basically is the taskbar down here. Any type of folders, searching, it shuts down the majority of the Windows program that hogs resources. So that's gonna give you a much bigger increase in your games. Now, if the game shuts down improperly, and you need to get your window explorer back up because it didn't restore it for you you can hit Control shift escape that will bring up task manager you go to file run new task and you just type in explorer and then it will run that task which for me it brought up a, a folder uh, but for you it'd bring back your whole taskbar and everything like that so there you go that's how i set up my razor cortex another great thing is razor cortex will automatically disable CPU parking uh, or core parking, which is great. If you haven't done that, you should be running your CPU without any parked cores. Uh, you can go ahead and Google that because I don't want to make the video too long. Uh, so CPU cores is a little bit simpler. Uh, I don't I, I don't adjust any of its settings. Uh, if you're streaming, they do have settings that you can adjust right here in the advanced settings. You can go to Twitch. You could enable Twitch streamer support, which will leave OBS open and it'll actually run OBS on one specific core for you, which is nice. Um, but that's that. So what I would do is then just find the game that I want and hit start game and let CPU core do its business. So it's already going to lower all the other processes in the background and boost whatever you're running to high. It's good. Nice, simple, easy to the point. Other than that, you guys might still need to upgrade your computer if you're having performance issues. 
And to do that, if you guys go to my channel, I have a video called What Should I Upgrade to Run PUBG? Basically, it shows you how to find a bottleneck in your computer so you know what you exactly need to upgrade. With PUBG, I can tell you right now the main things is going to be graphics card. You need a good high-performing graphics card with a lot of VRAM. Another big one is either having a lot of RAM or an SSD. Your textures get loaded in off your RAM. So even if you're not getting the marshmallow texture bug, but you're getting that stutter every now and again, that's your textures loading up ahead of you. So your textures get pulled off your RAM, and if your RAM can't hold all the textures it needs, then it's going to kick off and go to your hard drive to pull those. So if you have an SSD, then that's usually fast enough to where you won't notice a stutter. But of course, having more RAM will give you the best performance in that aspect. However, RAM is so expensive right now and SSDs are getting cheaper, at least in the US. So I went with an SSD over upgrading to more RAM, but that is something to keep in mind. Now, lastly, the next step is overclocking all your stuff. If you haven't overclocked your CPU, GPU, or RAM, I will be making a separate video on how to do that because I wanna make sure I go into detail so I let you guys know how to safely do it and how easy it is. Um, but I don't want to just keep dragging out this video. So that video is coming, but this is how I've gotten my 1.0 to run perfectly smooth and look good at the same time. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Spifferson, and I'm out. Peace.